Hi everyone. Today I want to talk to you about quadratic optimization and we're going to consider a couple different problems for that. So we're going to start with this one here. Suppose we have a dairy farmer that wants to fence in a rectangular pasture and subdivide it into three pens. We have 760 meters of fencing to work with and ultimately what we want to figure out are what dimensions would maximize the area. So let's go ahead and start by drawing a picture of our situation. It's not a very exciting picture, but it's our rectangular pasture and we can see our three pens. Next, let's go ahead and label the length and width. And since we have 760 meters of fencing to work with, we know that fencing is going to go around the perimeter of the rectangle and also between the pens. So what we can see is that we will have two lengths and four widths that are going to make up our 760 meters of fencing, and this gives us our first equation. Again, ultimately what we're looking to do is maximize the area, and we know the area of a rectangle is length times width. So that gives us our second equation. This is what we are trying to maximize. So we want to get our area equation in one variable only, and we're going to use our second equation for the perimeter in order to do that. So we're going to take that and solve for either the length or the width. I try to choose whichever is easier. So in this case, let's go ahead and solve for the length. So we'll go ahead and start by subtracting 4w from both sides. And then we'll divide everything by 2 to isolate the length. So we get that our length is equal to negative 2w plus 380. And what we're going to do then is take this represent representation for the length and plug it into our area formula so that we have a, an equation in one variable only. So our area, instead of being length times width, is now negative 2w plus 380 times width. If we go ahead and distribute this w, we will get that our area is equal to negative 2w squared plus 380w. Now we can see that this is a quadratic, <clears throat> so it is going to graph as a parabola and since our leading term is negative, it is going to open down. So what that means is that the maximum area is going to occur at the vertex. So all we have to do is find the vertex of this parabola. We could always graph this to find the vertex as well. And so if we were to put it into the calculator, we would write it like this. Y equals negative 2x squared plus 380x. So the x value of a vertex algebraically is found by taking the opposite of the b value divided by twice the a value. So in this case, we have a negative 380 divided by 2 times our a value, which is negative 2, which gives us a value of 95. So what we can see here is that our x values represented the width so what that means is that a width of 95 meters is going to maximize the area for us. Now from this, we can plug the 95 back into our area formula to find the maximum area, and we can then find our length as well. So plugging our width of 95 back into our area formula is going to give us a negative 2 times 95 squared plus 380 times 95 and that gives us a maximum area of 18,050 square meters. Since area is length times width, we can go ahead and take our area divided by the width to give us our length. So dividing the area by the width gives us a length of 190 meters. So to answer our question, the dimensions that are going to give us the maximum area in this case are going to be 95 meters by 190 meters. So next we're going to consider this situation. A uh, volleyball is served and the function that we're given here uh, represents the height of that volleyball above the floor where t is the time in seconds. 
Okay, so again, let's just make sure that we know what our variables represent here. T represents our time in seconds, and H of T represents the height of the volleyball in feet. So if we want to figure out what is the height of the volleyball initially, that's at time T equals zero before the serve is made. So replacing our t with zero, what we can see is that the initial height of the volleyball is seven feet. If we wanna figure out what the maximum height attained by the volleyball was, what we need to recognize is that this is again a quadratic function, and we can see that the lead coefficient is negative, so again, this parabola opens downwards, and the maximum is going to occur at the vertex. So once again, we are solving this optimization problem by finding the vertex. So in this case, the t value of the vertex is given by negative b over 2a, which gives us negative 9 divided by 0.25 seconds. So this is the time it took for the maximum height to be attained. So if we plug that in for t, that is going to give us the maximum height attained by our volleyball. And according to our model, 17.125 feet is the maximum height attained by that surf. So the last thing we want to figure out is how long does it take until the volleyball reaches the ground? Well, if the volleyball is on the ground, then the height of it above ground is zero. So in this case, we're going to solve it by letting h of t be zero, which gives us the equation zero equals seven plus nine t minus two t squared. So we're going to go ahead and solve this graphically. We could solve it algebraically using the quadratic formula, but in this case, we're going to solve it graphically. So what we're going to do is put one side of this equation in y1 of the calculator and the other side in y2, find a good window based on the other information that we have, and solve this. Okay, so here we have our calculator, and in y1 we put 0, in y2 we put our function 7 plus 9x minus 2x squared. So let's go ahead and find a good window, and we'll graph it. Our x values in this case represent time. What we found was that the volleyball attained its maximum height at 2.25 seconds. So it's not going to take 10 seconds for the volleyball to hit the ground. It's going to be less than that. So 0 to 10 would be a good window. Remember, our y values represent the height. We found that our maximum height was just above 17 feet. So maybe 0 to 20 would be good here. So our final window would look like this. If we go ahead and hit graph, we'll see our parabola. And it should look something about like this. So what we can see is that the far right of our graph here, where our parabola intersects the x-axis, is going to be where that volleyball hits the ground. So y equals 0 is the x-axis. And we can use our calculate functions to find this intersection for us. So we're going to hit second trace to get to our calculate functions, we are looking to calculate the intersection, that's number five. And this is one of our easiest functions. We're just going to hit enter, 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 and wait for our answer. And what we can see is right around 5.2 seconds is when that volleyball is going to hit the ground. So that answers this question, and we have one more to take a look at here. So here's our last situation. A uh, manufacturer's income in dollars for selling X items a week is given by this function, 200X minus 0.2X squared. The expenses to the manufacturer are given by 60X plus $3,000. Okay, so again, let's make sure we know what our variables represent here. X represents the number of items we're selling each week. We can let I represent that income and E represent the expenses. So the first thing we're asked to do is write a formula for the profit in terms of the number of items made. So the profit for this manufacturer is going to be given by the income that they make less the expenses that they pay out. OK, 
Okay, so we're going to subtract these two functions in order to find an expression for the profit. So initially our profit would look like this, taking our income function, subtracting our expense function. In order to simplify, we will go ahead and distribute this negative and combine like terms. After combining like terms, we should get this for our profit. It's equal to a negative 0.2x squared plus 140x minus 3,000. So if we want to figure out how many items should be made, so how many items, we are looking for x. In order to make a profit of 1,100, we can go ahead and replace our p with 1,100. And it's going to look like this. So again, if we wanted to, we could set this equal to zero and use the quadratic formula. But for today, we're just going to go ahead and graph this. So we'll go ahead and put our 1100 in Y1, our profit function in Y2. And again, to find where they're equal, we're going to find that intersection. So we can't see the whole equation here, but here is the tail end of it. And once we find a good window, we can find that intersection. So remember our x values represent the number of items sold. We can't sell any less than zero. Uh, we're not sure exactly how many we're talking about selling, so maybe we'll go something big like 1,000. Our y values represent our profit. And remember, we are looking for a profit of 1,100, so that y max needs to be something bigger, maybe 2,000. And if we hit graph, let's see what it looks like. There's our y equals 1100. And we can see some of our parabola here. We can see the intersections that we need to. We just cannot see the maximum. So for right now, let's go ahead and find our intersections. Again, we're going second trace to get to our calculate functions. We are calculating the intersection, which is 5. We're just going to hit enter, enter, enter. And it's going to give us one of our intersections. So in this case, we see that selling about 669 items is going to give us that profit we want. And we're going to have to do that a second time in order to find the other intersection. So before we hit enter, 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 we need to scroll a little bit closer to the intersection it did not choose the first time around before we hit that enter, enter, enter. And we can see that our other intersection is, let's call it 31 items being sold to give us the profit we're looking for. So either selling right around 31 items or 669 items is going to give us a profit of 1100. So two more things we want to figure out. How many items should be made each week to have the largest possible profit? Okay, so we're looking to maximize our profit here. Again, our profit function is a quadratic that opens downwards because it has a negative leading coefficient. And so the maximum is going to occur at the vertex. And what we know is that the x value of the vertex is found by taking negative b divided by 2a. And in this case, our B value is 140. Our A value is a negative 0.2. And that's going to give us a value of 350 items that we should sell in order to get the largest possible profit. And to find the largest possible profit, now that we know how many items, we can plug that back into our profit equation to find the largest profit. And that's going to give us a maximum profit of $21,500. And let's just go ahead and double check this graphically. From the previous part of our problem, we had this part of our quadratic. Again, we think that the maximum profit is $21,500. So let's go ahead and change our window for y to be something bigger than that so we can double check this. And let's just go ahead and make that y max 25,000 or something like that. If we take a look at our graph, we can now see our entire 
parabola. So we are again going to use our calculate functions, so second trace to get to our calculate functions, but this time we want to choose maximum, which is 4. In order to do this, it is asking for a left bound, so we want to scroll to something clearly to the left of our maximum. And we can now hit enter. What we can see is that now we're asked for a right bound, so we want to scroll to something clearly to the right of our maximum before we hit enter again. And hitting enter and enter again shows us that our maximum does occur at an X value of 350 items and a Y value, a profit, of $21,500. I hope this was helpful.